Hi, Mariano Gomez, the Dynamics GP Blobster here. Today I'm going to show you how to build a REST service endpoint using the HTTP connector in Power Automate. And we're going to see how we can get data through that um, REST endpoint using Postman and submit it via the SQL connector to Microsoft Dynamics GP. Now, while this might be applicable to Microsoft Dynamics GP, Keep in mind that this same technique can be used to actually get data into any application database that is either a Win32 application or any type of application built on any platform that supports a, um, a connector uh, to SQL or even a, data, a different type of data connector. So REST endpoints have been around forever. The good thing is you can actually build it in Power Automate with zero code and um, and have quite a bit of cool functionalities and embedded in it. So let's see how it's done. Okay, here I have my Fabricam sample company and I'm currently positioned on my customer navigation list and displaying the list of customers currently available in the system. Now, I also have Postman open here ready to insert adventure work cycles into my customer list. This, of course, is going to be done using Power Automate. So I have Power Automate over here and I have created a flow called Create Customer, which will then accept the request from a Postman to get that record into Microsoft Dynamics GP. So first, I'm going to show you how this example works. Then I'm going to show you how to build this Power Automate flow. So let's go ahead and click here on Postman. And as you can see, I have Adventure 001, Adventure Work Cycles. If I go back here to my customer list and just refresh this quickly, you'll see that I don't have Adventure Works in this list. So I'm going to just go back here to Postman quickly and click on the Send and uh, that's going to send the request over to the HTTPS endpoint exposed by the create customer flow. And we're waiting for a response back from that service. Let's give it a second. And effectively now we can see that something is happening in the back, but also something just happened here in the front. We have an error state of zero and no error string returned from our JSON payload that we just created. Okay. If I go back here to Dynamics GP and I click on the refresh button, we will see now that Adventure Work Cycles is part of the list of customers and that um, Delvin McGregor has been identified as a customer or a contact person at that customer. So I'm just going to double click here and that will take me to my customer maintenance window where I can further define additional information for this customer. Now, what I did here in order to create this customer or in order to be able to push this customer into the database, but I also created a stored procedure wrapper to the eConnect API stored procedure that basically exposes only the necessary columns from the database that I need to send in that information. So if I go under programmability here and stored procedures, I have created a stored procedure called flow create update customer record. So we're just going to get to that quickly here. So if I just click on uh, modify here, that will basically create an alter procedure statement for me, showing me exactly how this was built. So all I'm doing is I'm really calling the TA update create customer record stored procedure, which is a standard eConnect interface to Dynamics GP from the database level that is leveraged by the API in general. And I've wrapped a flow update customer record stored procedure around this procedure to avoid using all the parameters. That's as technical as I'm going to get, but um, keep in mind that that's something that we're able to do from Dynamics GP and that you can do for your application 
whatever that is written in. Keep in mind that in order to use those connectors, I have to have um, access via the uh, gateway. So that has to be installed and running on my server, authenticated in order for me to get access via the SQL connector to my SQL Server database. Okay, so now in Power Automate, we're gonna click new here to set up a new uh, flow from blank. I'm gonna skip the naming for now. But the whole idea here is that you will start out with the uh, an HTTPS request. So we're just gonna type in HTTP here. And the one that we want is when an HTTP request is received. Again, this is a premium connector and you gotta be aware of that if you're gonna start building flows that use this particular connector. So I'm gonna set up this here. And note that the first thing that um, we are prompted with is the HTTP post URL. And this particular one is generated after you save the actual flow itself. So when you click save here, this guy is gonna generate a URL for you. Now the request body for the JSON schema, that can be done in one or two ways. And I actually have a couple examples here. You can either use the, um, the schema definition. And if you are familiar with JSON, you can type this exact same thing into the body itself, or you, you can use a sample payload to generate the schema. So I'm just going to go quickly and show you how you can use the same payload that I used to uh, submit via Postman into um, that sample window. So I'm just going to copy this out, minimize this here, and I'm going to click on Use Sample Payload, and I'm going to paste this here. So once I am done, I can click Done, and that generates the exact same schema that you saw here in this side of the house. So you, whatever you're comfortable with, if you can write out JSON, you can write it in the, in the schema body or you can use a sample payload to process it. The most important thing here though, is to use the advanced methods. And here in the advanced method, what we wanna do is we wanna use a post. These are different HTTP verbs that are particularly useful when you're doing all sort of manipulation of web services. So a get is used to mostly display data or obtain data from a source. And a post actually puts data into that source. Patch updates the data accordingly and delete of course performs a delete action from the endpoint that is being called so in this particular case we want a post and at the relative path the way i like to think of this is um, it's a way for me to group different endpoints if i wanted to so if i had my sales group i would put a relative path of sales and that probably will help in identifying the type of endpoint that is being called. Now, keep in mind that these are Azure type generated endpoints or URLs. So it helps to have a relative path when you're building your flow. So I'm just gonna go ahead here and add a new step. And what I like to do is point out a couple of things. Since uh, this stored procedure has a few return values, what we wanna do is probably define those return values as um, variables in Power Automate. So I'm just gonna go ahead here again and type variables. And I like to be consistent with um, with what my definition is. So I wanna initialize a, val a value called RC. And if you notice here, my stored procedure returns RC as an output. So probably wanna have the same definition here. And I wanna make that a an integer value. And my initial value for this is zero. My third procedure also, and by the way, name your variables. So if this is RC, I want to make sure that this is var RC um, and easy to actually not be confused as to what's going on. Now I'm going to add a new action. And again, that's going to be a variable again. And I'm going to initialize this variable with the second parameter, output parameter, in this case, error state. So I'm just gonna make sure that I also pay attention to the return type, that's an integer. So we're gonna call this one error state and we're gonna make sure it's an integer variable picked from the selection list here on in zero as well. Okay, that's also good. So we can rename this one and we're gonna call this var error state, all right? And finally, as a new step, I'm gonna set up a, yet again another variable and I'm going to initialize this one as um, error string. That was our last output name. And this one is going to be of type string. 
and the value is going to be blank. So all I'm going to do here is rename this and call this var error string, just to be consistent with all the naming convention that we've used so far. Now, the next thing that I'm going to do here is in order for me to invoke this third procedure, I need to yet access another premium connector. And I'm going to use the execute stored procedure. Uh, and what this is going to do is it's going to ask me for a few things. It's going to ask me for my server name, my database name, and a procedure. Now, if I didn't have this connection set up before, I would actually have to enter all the credentials, identify the database, and do the select the gateway that I'm going to use for this. And then my, once my connection is created, I can set up all the information related. So here I'm going to use the connection setting. I'm going to also select the database that I'm targeting. And more importantly here, we're going to actually access the list of stored procedures. I'm going to just look for the word flow here. So this is a good thing about IntelliSense. So here's our flow update customer record stored procedure. And that's then going to expose all the parameters that that stored procedure uses in order for me to um, pass in the values. So for customer number, I'm gonna look here quickly in my dynamic content, and then you will see that I can pull the JSON value for customer number. For customer name, I can point it to the customer name property. For contact person, I'm gonna select the contact person property. For phone number, I'm going to select the phone number property. And if I scroll down a little bit, I might grab it from here. And for address code, I'm going to use the address code that is also set up as a property in that JSON. Now here are all my output uh, parameters. So I'm going to select the RC value here for RC. The IO error state, I'm going to point that to my error state variable. And the error string, I'm going to point to my error string variable. So we have all these. That's pretty cool. I think we have the stored procedure already set up. And then the next thing is to inform the caller of this endpoint how the uh, procedure performs. So I can actually go ahead here and create a new step. And in this case, I'm going to use the response action to get back information out to the caller. So here we're going to have the response. Again, that's a premium connector. And the status code will depend on the type of error that I want. But let's assume that all my responses are going to be a status code 200. So for the body, what we're going to do is we're going to write a little bit of JSON, not much. So I'm just going to initialize this with the two bra curly brackets. And I'm going to send out the error state. So that's going to be the integer value. And we're going to point that to our error state uh, dynamic content here. And I'm going to also send out the error string in case any error string, any error was produced from the call of that stored procedure. So that's where it's also important for you as a developer to be able to return states and values that your stored procedure call is um, able to produce so the um, caller can take actions based on your request. So that's it. I'm just going to hit um, save here. But first, I'm going to title this insert customer. And when I hit save here now, I should be able to see what the URI is that was created for this particular endpoint. The interesting thing here is keep in mind that these URIs will be actually created in the same region where your environment was created. So that's something for you to keep in mind. So I'm going to copy this URL here and I'm going to actually paste it quickly here in Notepad so you can see what that looks like. This is the endpoint and as you can see it incorporates the relative path that we specified previously. So that's pretty cool. It helps me group my um, URIs if I want or my endpoints by uh, functional capability that they're delivering. Now, the one thing here is I can then go ahead and select all this and I can then go back here to Postman and I'm just going to go hit OK here because we already saved it. And what I'm going to do here is create a new request. So I'm going to add a request and this request is going to simply be called insert customer. We can add a description if you want, but I'm going to save this to 
the Power Automate connection. Now, if you notice here, this request is a get. I'm going to set this to post because it has to match the same verb that I used in my flow. And um, if I go back here to the body, this is where I'm going to send in the request. I have to make sure that this is also set to raw, maybe, and JSON as the output. So the next thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to post the URL and um, I can then go ahead and get this particular payload here and paste this inside of this window. So once I have my request set to JSON, my, um, my verb set to post, I can then go ahead and make some changes here. We're going to create a new customer. So let's say this one is high octane motors. So we're going to just change this to high OCT. And um, we're going to use, why not, my name as the contact person. And then I'm just going to click here on send. And then that should invoke the insert customer that we just created. So now if I go to Microsoft Dynamics GP, and I look for high and just uh, do a lookup quickly. You can see now that high octane is in my database with my contact information as we previously specified. So this basically concludes my presentation on how to use the HTTP connector. We also saw how we can use the SQL connector to basically pass information via a REST endpoint to your legacy app or your on-premise app um, via the gateway. So I hope you enjoyed this presentation. Thank you very much and see you soon.